Welcome back to another PT Pearl. I'm Dr. Dom. I'm Dr. Jen. And we are going to be talking about pain today, specifically acute or short-term and chronic or long-term pain, the differences between them and how you might want to approach them. So stick around if you've ever had pain. We'll hear these different terms, acute pain and chronic pain, right? And again, just like everything else, people like to approach these like they're two specific separate things, but it's really a spectrum of having acute pain, having that onset of pain. And then if that persists and we continue to perpetuate or allow that pattern, it might develop into a chronic type pain. When we hear these big brackets of acute versus chronic, it's usually like acute pain, zero to three months, chronic pain, three to six months and beyond, right? That's usually like broadly based. But even you like to define it down even deeper in terms of acute pain and when that happens. Totally, because acute pain really is just that initial inflammatory state to something that might happen that causes this acute pain or trauma, or we just go out and run and overuse something on one day and then we're way inflamed. Mm -hmm. And so we have this acute inflammatory process that generally is like, oh yeah, now we have pain, now we have soreness. And for me, anytime we get past eight to 10 days, which is kind of how long general inflammation or if an inflammatory process starts, it should wrap up by eight to 10 days and we should have healed the tissue or the process in that area. If we allow that pain or that process to continue beyond the eight to 10 days, we start developing patterns. And if this is a back injury or if this is a knee injury, it might make us walk slightly different or a back injury, we might not want to pick like bend down to pick things up or we might be a little bit afraid to bend down and pick things up because of that pain Mm -hmm. that we had felt that time so we start creating these fears of doing certain movements again and that is the start of this process of how we create chronic pain patterns in our bodies how do we approach that then you know it's been pretty typical that the recommendation would be rice Mm -hmm. right rest ice compress and elevate Right, and that has been something that's been around for a long time. Hey, we'll rest it, we'll let that thing calm down, we'll put ice on it to get the inflammation out of there and heal it, we'll compress it to get that swelling out and elevate to get things to go back to the heart. But we're starting to realize that in that acute stage, we might need to do a little more. Well, and we're realizing that inflammation, especially in acute stages, is not bad. That is your body's natural response. So why are we trying to drive out our body's natural ability to heal itself? We need this inflammatory process to happen. We need these initial bouts of swelling at the area to actually be creating change within the tissue so that we start to heal. So rather than just running and icing it or resting it, we need to start changing the way that we approach it yeah so generally our first recommendation would be change the thing that brought about that initial inflammation in the first place you know was it a big new workout that you did that you may not have been ready for did you start a new training program in the last few weeks did you have any sort of surgery or traumatic injury that happened recently and so what was that initial stimulus that caused that acute pain to come on and can that easily be removed right Mm -hmm. and then the next thing is how do we start to direct that inflammation process rather than letting it do what it wants how can we take advantage of the healing that's happening there so that means that i'm not going to completely just elevate rest and forget about it do nothing but i'm actually okay maybe i don't feel comfortable walking on it but i'm going to start seeing how my ankle feels to just start moving back and forth a little bit. Can I even get some movement in there? Can I start pumping it? Then can I start putting a little bit more pressure? Can I use a band and start moving it up and down? You know, how can I work with this inflammatory process to guide my body back into a movement yeah. that I want to create? And that's where we, we modify, we back off, but we don't stop. And I think that's what we're learning more and more really helps to support the body in true healing. And then when it starts moving along the continuum and it's getting into this chronic stage, so say you've had back pain for Mm -hmm. over six weeks now, 
say you've had you've been walking on a faulty ankle for over six weeks, shoulder pain for over six weeks, whatever it may be, or 12 weeks or three, you know, months of this now, six months we're getting up to. And it is continuing. I've backed up. I backed off the things that I'm supposed to be not doing that were aggravating it. I've modified, um, you know, whatever it may be. And yet you're still having pain. Why is that happening? What should we be doing? Should we still be icing? Should we be heating? Should we be doing ice and heat? Should we be, you know, (laughs) should I be wrapping it? Should I still Mm -hmm. be holding it tight? What should I be doing that is correct? And that's where we're going to kind of go into now. Because pain is like the great equalizer in life. And it's one of the greatest motivators. And when we have pain during the day, it motivates us to not do certain things, right? Even if we're not paying attention to it. Hey, when I have pain, when I go to sit down on the toilet, maybe I'm going to do something slightly different and I'm going to avoid squatting straight down like I normally do. And I'm going to kind of turn to my side and use one hand on the seat and then sit down, right? We start developing these patterns like I start to get back pain more even when I think about sitting on a toilet or I see a box and I think about going down to pick it up and my back pain starts hurting more. That's when the issue with the pain starts becoming more the beliefs more the conditioning that we've we've kind of preached into our system over that six weeks to six months or more of having that pain and that's where we get to start developing a new relationship with that pain in order to start to heal along this journey of chronic pain and understand everyone in the world has pain like literally (laughs) i'm not sure you're going to find someone maybe they're highly highly enlightened and they just have this new relationship with it but (laughs) (laughs) and it's just essentially where we want to get to because to be honest we're going to experience pain and it is a normal part of our relationship in life with our relationship with our body and it allows us to understand what we need to start focusing on i yawn when I know that I need to get more sleep and I'm probably a little bit more tired. Mm -hmm. My stomach grumbles when I know that I probably haven't, maybe I'm not drinking enough water or eating enough food or whatever, I'm I'm neglecting something. And so when pain is showing up in the body, it's just like, hey, you're, you're not moving me as much or you're not, you're neglecting something. Am I neglecting my stretching routines? Am I neglecting my strength routines? Am I only doing yoga because I'm afraid to strength train? We don't want to just be doing one thing, okay? And so having this new relationship with pain, that tells me it's just my alarm system. It's good. It alerts me when I need to start diving in and I'm not paying attention to something. And so when we get into these chronic stages, we actually start to heighten kind of the sensors that are perceiving things in that area. So let's just go to the back pain example. Mm -hmm. You know, say before we've ever had pain here, like our nerves rest at a certain level. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, say that's 10 and they feel pain when we get to 20, right? So you hit your knee and it bumps you past that 20 range, right? Because you hit your knee pretty hard. When we've had chronic pain, our resting level comes up instead of 10, we're resting at 18 or 19. And it takes very little. We think about a stressful conversation we had with a friend and it bumps us up above that 20. And then we feel that back pain. Again, we think about, oh, I need to walk downstairs and unload my car, the groceries from my car. (laughs) We spike above that 20. So we start again, any stress that adds load to that nervous system might bump us above that pain threshold and then make us experience that chronic pain because again, we've had a good six months now of training these systems to be ready to protect us against something that might make us perceive pain. We build more beliefs. Well, that hurt. You say I was already in that heightened state of stress and all the other things were compounded upon it. And then I did the movement and it it confirmed like, see, I had pain, so I can't bend down. I can't lift that thing. I can't do this. I can't do that. We, we start to build upon these beliefs. Or I went to the doctor, they showed me an MRI. See, that's why. That's why I can't do this. This this confirms my belief in my head of what was happening. And now that is true. That is right. Now, my belief is that this thing I need to. I mean, there's so many different things that that we start to then 
fall into these terminology from a lot of doctors, a lot of clinicians as well, in terms of physical therapists and chiropractors who drill in this message of fear of things that we can't do anymore. Um, we can't <laughs> ride bikes anymore because I can't bend down. I can't bend down to even tie my shoes because I can't round my back. Don't pick your kids up. Don't, yes. don't whatever it may be, like the, the things that doctors might start telling people, it's it really puts a lot of fear as to how they're going to live purposefully <laughs> and again continues to perpetuate this problem and so we again before these things kind of tap into a little research or look into a few studies and the things that it says are never related to the chronic pain or never directly correlated to this is why you have that chronic pain anterior pelvic tilt weak core muscles weak neck muscles the structure and how it looks on an image Right. So t these different things aren't the things that are the cause of your back pain. Yeah. So even like, oh, I have scoliosis. So do I. I don't have back pain. Um, so, you know, even increased kyphosis in the in the thoracic spine or increased lumbar lordosis doesn't always predict that you have back pain. Yeah. Um, even not only anterior pelvic tilt, but posterior hip shifts can't determine that it's your that's your back pain torn rotator cuffs you know biceps tears these types of things doesn't necessarily equate why we have the level of pain we have trigger points yeah places where i touch you oh that feels that feels hot that feels really sensitive this is why you have pain nope the end result but it's not why it cannot determine why you guys if you're experiencing chronic pain um, places to go, I would say, explain pain is a great one. Um, resources and articles from Greg Lehman mm -hmm. um, are great to to read and refer to. Um, is it pain explained? Pain explained. Pain explained. Right. Yeah, that's the one. Again, we talk about it as a process of training these different neurologic processes in the brain. And if you imagine something as a cup or a bucket, right? We have certain amounts of things that fill this bucket. And over time, we're just going to start overflowing because the bucket gets filled up with things like stress, worry, mm -hmm. belief, mm -hmm. you know, repetitive motions and postures or what we feel during those motions and postures. And those are the kinds of things that fill up this cup of chronic pain. Yeah. And then it really easily starts overflowing. So to start emptying that cup, we start to address those things. Well, we have to address everything, everything yeah. that could fill up the cup. Are you getting enough sleep? Are you eating the most nutritious foods? Or are you eating more? Are you not getting as much nutrition within your diet? Are you drinking enough water? Are you in, in an environment of constant stress? Meaning you go home, you have kids screaming, you go to work, you have a boss screaming, you go like your relationship is in turmoil. Any one of these things, it does not have to be tissue damage. Again, it's not structural. It's not tissue damage. It's not just biomechanics. Can biomechanics play a role into loading the body when we're putting on load? 100%. We still want to understand how we can improve our efficiency within our body. Yeah, I think there was something like Greg Lehman said, like, just because whatever we think that neurologic processes might be more active during chronic pain, it doesn't make physics not exist. Exactly. <laughs> so if you put your joint in a certain position and load it really, really, really heavily, you might injure yourself. Yeah. That's not what we're saying. But we have to look at all of these things all together it's not one or the other okay mm -hmm. and once one of them starts to overspill that's when we start to amplify this experience of pain within our body if you have moments of being able to change your beliefs if you know like start journaling on the positive times not saying every time i do this i have back pain you're playing into the belief that every time you do that you're going to have back pain yeah now start saying what are the mornings I wake up and I didn't notice back pain? Maybe you can say, oh, well, I was distracted. My kids came in and da, da, da. Well, that's okay. That's still a win. That's still a win. I don't care if it was a distraction. You didn't notice the pain. So mm -hmm. start journaling on those experiences and you're going to start to see a pattern and a new belief of what is possible, what is possible yeah. to achieve, whether it's lifting, whether it's running, whether it's cycling, whatever it is that you want to do, it is possible to get past this. One of the studies that I looked at said that when we are dealing with people who have chronic pain, it's probably actually more beneficial to do the movements that give you some pain rather than doing movements that are pain free. Again, because one of the biggest processes that needs to happen is re-educating that movements that give us pain aren't bad because it's just that movement itself that's triggering our pain process.
So retraining that movement and retraining our relationship with that movement and understanding that just doing it can help us desensitize it is, is the biggest part of the process. So that's called like remapping or remapping those movements so that we know, oh, we're safe. It just is painful because that's the thing that's always giving me pain. Thanks for joining us on another PT Pro from the Optimal Body Podcast on your acute and chronic pain. Comment below if you learned anything or if you have any major questions um, and stick around for the next PT Pearls.